here to show you how to make fish piccata. In other words, fish with lemon caper sauce. So we have this all the time with chicken, but it's actually really easy to do with fish too. And I'm using a firm white fish today, so cod, but you can really do it with anything as long as you're gentle with your fish. Um, and if you're not gentle with your fish, you'll just end up with pieces of fish with a great sauce that you could put on top of pasta. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. Um, and hopefully you'll try to make it at home too. So I have three pieces of cod, kind of oddly shaped, but it's the, what it is. Um, cod usually comes frozen, and so it usually comes in funky shapes like this. You can cut this one down so that it becomes four pieces if you want. This is to serve two people, so it's really up to you how you would want to do this. Um, cod, easily bought at uh, Costco. Costco would be a good place, but it does tend to be dry. What happens is that it's mishandled. Um, when it freezes, it kind of dries it out already. So when you refreeze it again, it dries it out even more. And so what happens with cod, I find, is that it's been frozen and refrozen so many times that you kind of have a hit or miss with how good it is. So I like buying cod that is previously frozen but has been defrosted for you. So you can kind of look at it to make sure it's not dry and kind of mealy. So I'm gonna coat this like you would coat normal chicken piccato or chicken with caper sauce. So I have a mixture, I have flour here. And then I've got a little bit of salt, pepper. Yep, I've got salt, pepper, and a little bit of Italian seasoning too. So I'm gonna add that all in there. I'm gonna give it a good mix. Let's grab a spoon to mix that guy up. And we're gonna do this as quick as possible. So. If you've ever done a breading or a coating of flour for anything, I want you to practice this. Don't actually start coating with flour until you have your stove on and ready to go. So for this dish, we're gonna do a mixture of butter and olive oil. So traditionally, you do use all butter. It's a really rich, buttery sauce that you go for. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna stay a little bit healthier today and just use a little bit of the butter. Go ahead and use full butter if you want. I always say add a little bit of olive oil just so that the butter doesn't burn. There's milk solids inside that butter and it just burns really quickly and that's how you get brown butter. I'm heating my pan up right now, getting nice and hot. While it's, when it's hot, I'm gonna add in my butter and olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and melt down. While that's melting down now, I'm gonna come back here and get my fish ready. So to get my fish ready, I'm gonna make sure my fish is pretty dry. I'm gonna put it, lay it right in there, and then give it a good pat. Kind of give it a good slap, just like that. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my other pieces, watching my butter the whole time and adjusting it if I need it. You do need a lot of butter slash oil to coat your pan because if you think about it, you've got some sticky stuff going in there, but in order to get a good sauce out of it, we want it to kind of stick so that it gives that flavor into the sauce. And that's what we call fawn, those little, little pieces that stick to the bottom of the pan. So my fish is now ready. I'm gonna set that right here and I'm gonna turn you back to our stove. So butter's melted. I'm gonna give it a good swirl, just like that. And once I say one, two, three, four, five, I'm gonna start putting my fish in. So, should give it a good sizzle. Get a good sizzle. And what I don't want you to do is touch the pan now. So just let it do its thing. So what else goes in here? So you've got a little bit of that extra, so you could have made more if you want. What else goes into this great dish? Vermouth? or white wine. So you can choose which one you have. If you have vermouth lying around, you, I use vermouth because that's what I have. I've got fresh lemon, so one fresh lemon. Capers. I like a lot of capers in this dish. So I go for two tablespoons plus another probably. So you can go for like a tablespoon too. Really depends on how much you like capers. If you're like me, add more capers. And then I'm gonna actually boost this flavor up by adding a little bit of garlic. That's not what you're supposed to do though, okay? so. Don't worry if you don't want to add garlic. Um, I just like adding garlic into everything. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick it up and flip it. 
I'm actually not gonna try to finish cooking this right now. If you can, it's perfectly fine, but we're gonna put it back into the sauce anyways. And so don't worry if you feel like you can't cook this through all the way. All right, so there's that ready to go. Let's get our garlic going. I'm gonna take my knife. I'm gonna give it a good push. One more, just like that. And I'm gonna roll it around. I got my garlic going. Stack them all up and give it a good chop. Just a rough chop is all I need. I'm gonna check my fish one more time. Just looking for a nice golden sear on it. And I think we're there. Pretty much, because I'm gonna make the sauce in there now. So I'm gonna take my fish out and set it aside. It's gonna go back in there, don't worry. I'm gonna add my garlic. Give it a good toss. And you can add more oil and sauce out of it. But when you do this next part, I really need you to be careful. That's gonna be nice and hot. There's oil in there, it might be splashing, and you've got alcohol, especially if you're using vermouth. If you're using wine, you're perfectly fine. But if you're using vermouth, be careful. Um, you don't want it to catch fire. So I turn off the flame and then pour it. And then I'm gonna go in and get all that good stuff right back up. I'm gonna lay my fish back in there. I'm gonna turn my flame back on, just like that. Let it kind of cook for 30 seconds or so, just to get those, that vermouth flavor into the fish and into the capers, just like that. And if you can tell, the reason why I'm using this pan is because I was scraping it to get up all those great flavors. All right, just like that. And if you really wanted to make more of a sauce, you could even use fish stock or chicken stock and more, make more of a saucy sauce. But we don't need that. We're gonna end this now, so I'm gonna turn it off now. And the way to tell if the fish is done is, if you look at the edge of it, you should be able to push down on it and it should flake really easily so it just falls apart. You don't want to overcook fish. That's the last thing you want to do because then it becomes rubbery and cod is the number one fish that does that to you. So don't do it. Now I'm going to get my lemon. This is off. I'm going to pull it off the flame and then add my lemon juice. The reason being, the flavor of acidity or the acidity flavor in lemon tends to dissipate when it hits heat. So if I've got this on and I'm doing this, what ends up happening is I just lose all the flavor of the lemon and I'm left with just like watered down kind of lemony tasting fish. So that's not what I want. I want that beautiful, beautiful fish. So before I finish though, I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of parsley. I would technically, I would usually use Italian parsley, but unfortunately I only have curly leaf parsley today. But I find that adding parsley in this dish really brightens it up. So go ahead, go ahead and add parsley if you have it lying around. I'm just gonna grab my parsley, give it a rough chop. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle it right on top. And you've got fish piccata ready to go. See you next time.